Kosolo, map number one. We are in the winner bracket of the playoffs, everybody. Yep. Back to the playoffs here with the X Cup Summer. Very, very happy. We went through 10 qualifiers, so a lot of action for the teams to qualify. Eight teams made it. A double elimination bracket. Best of three in the first round. Then we're moving on into best of fives. And, of course, the grand final is once again at best of seven. Guys, the current season is, for now, at least the last season of the X Cup. And I want to use the opportunity once again to send out a big shout-out to Mr. X. Now, first and foremost, Almost. I want to stress this again. I am not Mr. X. There's always some YouTube comments or somebody else that comes in is like, we know it's Caldor. No, it's not me. I have zero reasons to not tell you if I was Mr. X. So please don't give me the credit because I have nothing to do with this. This is really just a Heroes of the Storm fan that was part of the early alpha and beta, loved HGC, loved watching the pros, was extremely unhappy when Blizzard canceled HGC and said, hey, I want to do something for this community. Community. I want to do something for the esports scene and together with him we developed the format that we have right now This is our fourth season and I'm incredibly thankful to him for making all of this happen without him We wouldn't have all of these awesome games. So big shout out to our mr. X financed the entire thing here We have 4,000 euros of prize money for the uh, for the season here So this is what the teams are playing for in the playoffs and I can't wait for all of these games again. I mean, this is the early rounds, obviously. So it's just the round of eight in the winner bracket. But as we're heading into the semis and winner brackets, losers bracket, things are, of course, going to get pretty intense here. So uh, let's check that one out. We got my try with a blaze. That's the first pick for our first map. And I'm actually really happy that we have Cursed Hollow. Normally, that's not a first map uh, or first game map that we're getting here. But it's one of my favorites. So, uh, the Haka and Hanzo. Yeah, bishops, of course, with this Hanzo. I mean, duh. Uh, so, there's that. And we have Sylvanas banned. Mayev banned. But bishops and Hanzo. Yeah. Obviously. I mean, they go together like pineapple and pizza. It's, it's just a match made in heaven. What are we getting for the red team, though? What do we get here? We get... Genji and Rhaegar. Alright, so Nenopi already starting things up with Genji. I'll get Rhaegar on top of that. I was actually thinking about other pairings that really work well together, and I think another one would be Caldo and Ice Cream. Yeah, that's another good one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ice Cream and Strawberries. Another good one. <laughs> I really have to stop this. <laughs> I'm always going down the wrong path with these stupid ideas because all of a sudden I'm sitting here and I'm starting to get hungry, so yeah, it's it's dangerous. But yeah, either way, we have now the bans coming in and again, it's Hammer that gets banned out. But you can already tell that a lot of the teams currently are not banning Hammer on the first rotation. I think that's going to change once the Team Oxygen is making an appearance here. So yeah, but we have Diablo, Diablo banned. I mean, the Bang Bush is the favorite for this one. But Team Ash has always caused a couple of upsets in the past, and they could do that again. We get Lauba on his Muradin. Lauba is just jealous because he can't grow that kind of a beard. That's pretty much just what's happening. So that's why he's play, uh, playing Muradin all the time. He's just jealous. He's compensating. Anduin played by, by Henning. And, well, we got our last two picks for the red team. So they still need a main tank. And are they going to play global? Yes or no? Currently doesn't really look like it. Could change things. Ooh, Vala. Ooh, ETC and Vala. All right, didn't expect that. Could go for a stage dive here. So here we go. And the final pick for the team in blue. What is the Bang Bush going to take here? They need a little bit more damage. Hanzo alone is not going to cut it. They got obviously her uh, slows and everything already. And well, a bit of hesitation here. Come on, Skog. What's it gonna be? Another melee? They go for the double global. They get forced into the picture. Game number one in the best of three, everybody. The round of eight in the winner bracket. X Cup Summer Playoffs. Let's go. Bangush against Team Ash, map number one. And look at that. Vala with stacks on the auto attack. Me likey. On the left side, on the map, we got uh, first and foremost, though, the Bang Bush with Henning on Anduin, Lauber on Muradin, Bishops with Hanzo, 
Skok on Falstad, and we got Swam Grotta on Dehaka. On the right side of the map, Morenas with ETC, My Try on Blaze, Neno is playing Genji, Renella on Rega, and Falander feels lucky today, going for the Gambit on level 1, despite the fact that they don't have a second support to keep him alive here, so we'll see how he's playing it. I mean, to be fair, they're not playing, uh, you know, single damage Vala, so obviously if Valana dies a couple of times, it's fine. But you would obviously try to limit that as much as you can, but it's all about the auto attacks and the direct damage. If you can get that done properly, then Muradin is going to have a tough time in this game. So this is going to be pretty big. For now, we have... Very, very quickly, uh, heroes rotating to the sides, not really dealing with anything too much just yet in the middle of the map. So we're not going to get that big 5v5 brawl. Instead, top side, Genji doing his thing. Vala plays a little bit safer. It's a little bit weird, honestly, because if you're like playing Vala, it's more important to not die than to stack like crazy. Uh, that could have been a kill. It might still be a kill, and it is a kill! Nice! Team Ash, despite the fact that the initial power slide didn't work for them, they are able to get the hits in. So, job well done, and they're trying for another one. Bishops is in trouble too, and he's dead! That's a double kill! They got two, and Falender gets three stacks here while they're trying to kill Morenas. He's had 32 stacks! What?! Now, that's actually a pretty great start for Team Ash. I was just, to talk, uh, just about to talk a little bit more about Vala. Now, as I said, the synergy with the level 16 talent is so awesome that the extra attack speed that you get through your Gambit is fantastic. So it's not really that important to stack with her the entire time. It's more important to maintain that auto attack speed. Now, obviously, there is always a bit of a trade-off. So if you die a few times, but you're making up with it by getting a huge amount of stacks, that's fine too. But generally speaking, playing it a little bit safer is worth it in most cases. So right now, we have 32 stacks already for Vala. We got her with the Death Dealer here. And they got two kills to zero. So nice rotation at the bot lane. They damaged the entire front wall. And I gotta say, that was well done. That was really well done. And Lauber, yeah, they're jumping in again. But look at that. He's in trouble. Now, he's not going to die here. But he is eating a lot more damage than he's probably comfortable with. Now, the first curse is coming up soon. Skok already died once. And by now, we're talking about a bot lane tribute. Obviously, the big problem here for Team Ash is the double global for the bank bush. That's a real big issue. In the late and the mid game, when the map opens up a little bit, having that extra global mobility for the blue team is going to be a huge issue for Team Ash. So they got to be very careful with this. Right now, they're doing extremely well. I really like the pressure that they are applying in the middle. The extra attacks that they're getting in against someone like Lauber. The wall is already falling, and they might even be able to get the first tribute here. But as the map opens up, those globals will be more and more useful. And that is definitely a bit of a concern. Stormball connects. The Haka is here. Falander uses the opportunity again to get some extra hits in and boosting his level 1, but they're losing ETC. And that is going to be a first tribute for the Bang Bush, who are now answering with a double kill. I'm just showing that they're not out of this just yet. They're not just simply going to roll over here and move on to the lower bracket. So by now, we got two kills to two. Level 7 for both teams. Vala has the first quest repeated. Uh, well, the quest first, blah, first quest reward locked in. So there we go, 50. 50 stacks is what she currently has. Hasn't died yet either. On level 1 with a hot pursuit here. So a little bit more movement speed. Always welcome, of course. And here comes tribute number two. More structural damage until now from Team Ash, but they need to have a bit more here. Yeah, and also Falset went into the secret weapon, so this is a talent that is not as useless anymore as it was in the past. And also what's important, if you're planning on uh, pushing the side lane and not really necessarily participating in every single team fight, that talent gets even more value. And we are going to see a lot of side laning from Falset trying to take structures down. Vala again capitalizing on these easy stacks that she can get here, sitting at 60. Uh, Falender <laughs> vaulting forward pretty heavily. He has to be a bit careful on that one. Interrupt is in. 
Yeah, ETC gets attacked again. Oh, locked down once more. Morena has to be careful. They really want him, don't they? But the tribute has been taken. And Lauba is getting attacked heavily here by Valen in particular. Vala really using Muradin as a moving pincushion. As she is getting one arrow in after another. So, job well done. Yeah. 71 stacks for Farlander for now. What's the damage at this point? 10,000, 11,000 on Hanzo. As I said, Vala could become a problem in the late game. So if they can't get a hold of her and Farlander continues the stacks and doesn't die, then, well, Muradin is not going to have an easy late game. I can tell you that much. But level 10 abilities are obviously increasing uh, the potential of killing somebody exponentially. So, yeah. Already Farlander jumping out, and yes, playing it very safe here. Rhaegar also contributing to this. Here come the level 10 abilities, and we have them a bit faster for the Bang Bush. So right now, Team Ash has to be careful. <laughs> Team Ash is not the only one that has to be careful. The birdie barely, barely dodging that second stun. A talking stun, bishops with the arrow. Morena's not having any issues here. It's another stun in. And Maitra might even have to bunk up. Vala gets a kill on the Ark at the bottom of the map as they're trying to go for the fort there. Even looking uh, for a potential kill topside doesn't deviate them away from that. So, yes, we have probably a trade in forts. That's at least what it looks like right now. Blaze at the top is in trouble. And he goes down. ETC with a big dance party. But as Morena's is definitely going to die... They are taking the bottom fort, and they have successfully turned that one apart. 80 stacks also for Farlander. Another tribute about to be taken. Top side, as you can tell, they're going for that fort too, so they're trying to make it at least even structures. But this is a nice opening into the game. I like that. Both of the teams being aggressive. Both of the teams looking for kills. Now we have two tributes for two in just a second. Don't see anybody moving in here. Well, maybe Dehak? Nah, not really. Yeah, they're gonna get this one. So the next one is gonna be for the curse. And of course, we got both bosses up as well, so there's a lot on the line right now. And talking bosses, apparently they were trying for a sneaky one. Can't make that work. Up here, stuns against Mirrodin, he jumps out, and Gust had to be used to. Better safe than sorry, bit late, but still making sure that they keep the dwarf alive. And the next tribute is spawning topside. So yeah. That's of course also kind of important. The bottom boss is really important for the red team now. Because they already took the bottom fort down. Yeah, Vala and Rhaegar already on their way towards the top. Yeah, it's about the curse at this point. And Nano P is just double checking what's happening here. But they really want this. So each team is now going for the boss. These bosses will move on to the forts in the lanes. So it's not really a big problem. But it's a better position for Team Ash because they are already very close to the top tribute. And if you have a boss on lane and then uh, you curse your opponent, that's of course a fantastic situation for your team. And that's what they're looking for here. So top side, can they maybe even take that wall down already? Deal with the minion waves a little bit, they're already trying. False that is flying in, the Haka has the global. Of course, boss is now pushing the bot lane too. But here we go, tribute in play, and this is where the show is really beginning. Level 13 talents are ready for the Bang Bush, and that gives them a bit of an unfair advantage over here. And they are letting it go. Wow. All right. They let the curse go. You know, I'm uh, very... Where is that arrow going? <laughs> that, one right there. that one went nowhere. Bishops YOLOing one out. But they are trying to defend. They gave that up. They didn't want to play against the level 13 talents. I am uh, used very different playstyles from Russian Ukrainian teams. They are known for their aggression, but this time we've seen none of that. So currently they're giving up the bottom four. They might have to give up the one in the mid lane too, especially now that the blue team has taken the mercenary camp. But with the help of Rega and Genji, they're at least keeping their bottom keep in play. So that's the main goal here. Make sure that that keep doesn't fall. Kind of have to. But yep, next attack is also coming. It's a pretty interesting situation for, for them right now. Because they gave up a lot here. And they're even losing a lot at the bot lane. Guys, they're going to lose this keep. So this is more than just an uncomfortable situation right now for the red team. I think they lost way more than they gambled. They didn't want to fight against level 13 talents. I can absolutely understand that. But I believe they thought that they would just lose maybe a 4, maybe 2. 
But now they lost all their forts. They lost one of their keeps. And ooh, that one hurts. And it's a massive leading experience also for the Bangbush now. So they gotta do something here. Vala is now the tempered by discipline. We don't have Manticore for her yet, or that would change things a bit, especially with Muradin in mind, who's going to suffer once that these attacks are coming. But it's a wild one now. So, yep. This is a pretty far pushed out lane with catapults now being uh, pushing in all the time. Falender, yeah, he's five stacks away from getting the second quest reward. And they got a stun on, uh, on Blaze. One stun, two stuns. Mitra is in real trouble. Has to bunker up. The rest of the team is moving in. Mitra gets stunned again. ETC goes for the party. Hits two. They want to go for Anduin. And he's dead. Anduin is down. Easily eliminated. Nicely done. Everything just focusing on him. And now they nearly got the bird. Oh my god. 70 hit points. Bala at 108. The bird goes down as Blaze gets the kill. And they are on the move. Level 16 is ready for the Bang Bush, but that doesn't help them. They're two heroes down now. And that was a huge problem. And it all started with this play right here. Have a look at Anduin. So they're trying to go for plays. They nearly catch him. Then Anduin gets caught and everybody moves for the support. And they're able to take him down. Even the X-Strike is being used here to make sure that he dies. And once that Anduin is dead, they are getting their next kill against Falstead. Now they are about to hit level 16. They were also able to get another structure at the top. So that means they have just destroyed a fort. Can they make the play for the tribute though? 20 seconds. They will have level 16. They need to take these catapults down. Mitra is already doing that. Vala is of course now with Manticore. A massive problem for the front line of Bangbush. But that curse would hit hard. That curse would hit very, very hard if they can use that right now. And this is the perfect timing. It's one level difference. Muradin is channeling it though. Can they interrupt? Yes, they can. Alright, so. My try goes for the interrupt. Down here, the Haka. Yeah, careful, my friend. If he gets too close to Vala, she's going to murder him. Right now, with those order attacks, yeah, that's an issue. And again, Blaze gets caught a little bit, but is able to make it out. But Falstead has now so much time and space over here. A little bit shocked that they didn't fight for this. Now again, they don't have to. There's no, There was no tribute for the Bang Bush. This is their first. But at some point, Team Ash has to say, okay, we're going to take this now. And they're normally the team that really just YOLOs it out. I mean, we're joking about the Russian aggression in Heroes of the Storm for the last couple of years for a reason. These guys have, in the past, fought with talent disadvantage, with number disadvantages. They didn't give a shit. They just went in and went ham. But now, very calm and collected, really trying to wait for the perfect opportunity. And it might have just presented itself. They're going for the hits. They're trying to go for the kill here. Rega in trouble has to self-ancestral. I think they had a bit more trouble in that choke point than they expected. Here comes the next tribute. Four kills to five still. The Bang Bush is alive and kicking. They go for ETC and that's a bit of a blunder here by Team Ash. They face check too hard. Can they get a counter kill? They're trying. Vala, big damage from there. But Rega is now dead. That's two heroes down. Vala is at 29,000. They're trying to go for Muradin. And even... Oh my god, she gets the kill. But now Vala's dead. Vala dies. That's the first 5% of the attack speed gone. Oh boy, and with the, it's a five-man wipe. Entire team is gone. A little bit of a hobbity hop by Skok as they are trying to go for the core. There's catapults, by the way, dealing with the top keep as we've been talking about this. And this should be the end of game number one. Team Ash miscalculating a little bit towards the end as they're finally forcing a fight. Trying to use the choke point to their advantage. It backfires. And now this is the lead in the series for the blue team as the Bangbush locks in the victory on Cursed Hollow and takes Team Ash down. GG, well played. The blue team with lead in the best of three. Before we head into game number two, make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet so you don't miss out on any future content here on Calder TV. Map number two. Team Ash, they couldn't turn it around on the first map. Face checking that bush, feeling forced to take that fight didn't really help. But I mean, the bang bush, <laughs> true to their name, they set up a banging bush and a little bit of a Chinese bush trap. And it worked out really, really well for them. 
So uh, even in uh, 2022, the Chinese Bush meta is still alive. Garden of Terror is our second map of the best of three series here in the first round of the winner bracket. And well, can Team Ash fight back? Another big map. Normally what you see banned here are Globals and Hogger. Hogger in particular is very, very strong with all of those camps that you can take because it's just so good. And yeah, we'll see what they prefer on taking here. Now we're starting things off with the Mayev ban again. But there's also bishops to consider with his Hanzo fetish. <laughs> but yeah, globals are at rest right away. Brightwing banned. Considering that a first pick first ban is for Team Ash, I would assume that they are not going to be the ones to ban out Hogger. Hogger is usually a very, very early pick. I mean, let's face it, normally he's banned. Normally on Garden he's banned. But if not banned, then Hogger is usually taken very, very quickly. So, yeah. Uh, what do we get? Hanzo is banned against bishops. And now a little bit of a moment of truth. Hogger ban, yes or no? No! They ban Lucio. Another good ban. Don't get me wrong. But that leaves Hogger open and they don't take him. They go for Sylvanas instead. Alright. Fair enough. I mean, yes, Sylvanas also a good choice, of course. But Hogger is pretty sexy on this map. There's so many mercenary camps here and his clear speed is very, very strong. He can take those very easily by himself in a reasonable time frame. So that usually gives him a high pick priority. The Haka, another one on the side lane that you kind of want because again it's a big map but there's the Hogger pick and we get Blaze together with that. So immediately a double front line already. And here we go. That's a really nice start for the Bang Bush. I mean don't get me wrong I like Sylvanas but playing the map is something that Bang Bush does well. And it seems like they're going to do it again here. Now, you need good camp clear. Again, this is one of the maps that has the most... This is the map that has the most camps in the game. In the competitive map pool. So there's the Haka. So that they at least have the global. And we get Jojo. So wave clear is not going to be a problem for them. At least on uh, the melees. Well, Sylvanas either. But what else are you going to ban out now? They can target Renella again. And they do with three supports banned against Renella. <laughs> Just immediately taken away. It's like, yeah, we're not going to deal with any of that crap. All right, let's remove this quickly. And what are they banning against them? Hammer! The sergeant is out. Now for bishops, he's been... I mean, bishops has been playing a lot. He's been playing Cassia, he's been playing Lunara. Could still pick either one of those. I'm a little bit more interested to see what Laura is going to pick. Is he just going to lock in another Murden, or are we going to see him deviate away from this a bit? Let's see. <laughs> Rhaegar, okay. Yeah, even more wave clear there. Ooh, and Vala. <laughs> I like that. If they go for an auto attack style, then uh, it's going to be... Uh, I mean, this is going to be a single damage... Or a single range damage Vala anyways. But they could also just decide to play an arrow build, for example, or something else. So, we'll see. Would be kind of funny if he goes for the auto attack, though. Pretty much just telling them, I'll show you how it's done. I mean, he's been part of that team in the past, so there's that. Balloon. Tracer and Malfurion! The Cavalry! Falander! Look at that! And here comes Diablo, so uh, he lets Murden go this time, and instead we get Dibbles. Yeah, well, Garden of Terror, guys. Map number two, let's get things started. Team Ash against the Bang Bush, the second map of the Best of Three series. The Bangbush in the lead against Team Ash, and we are headed for Garden of Terror. Henning on the left side playing Rega. We got Skok on Hogger. Lauber and Diablos from Grotta and Blaze. Bishops with the arrow build is playing Vala. We got Falander for the red team with Tracer, Maitri and Dehaka. Nenopi on Sylvanas, Renella on Malfurion, and Morenas is playing Jojo. Alright, awesome stuff everybody. Let's get started with map number two and see who takes it. Will the Bangbush move on to the winner bracket semi-final? Or will Team Ash have another chance on map number three to send them into the loser's bracket? We're gonna figure that one out pretty quickly. Already blazed down at the bottom of the map. 
Also, while we're talking about Awesome Heroes of the Storm, again, I want to remind everybody, especially the people that are watching this on YouTube, we have a big event announced also for the end of the year. Once again, in October, we're going to Miami for another big offline event. We already had a fantastic one in February, where we had North America and Europe uh, play against each other in an offline scenario, which obviously was fantastic, but this time we are making things even bigger. So we are planning to have three North American teams, three European teams and two Korean teams at the venue. Qualifiers are open. Anybody can can participate if you guys want to get some friends together and play in the tournament and the qualifiers. You can definitely do that. There's $11,000 of prize money on the line. Trips are paid, hotels as well. So definitely make sure to check that out if you haven't yet, even if it's just to save the date. And maybe even plan a bit of a vacation in Miami and watch the whole thing live. If you want information, I'll include the link in the video description so you can check it out there. And also, again, the quick note that we also have a GoFundMe, a crowdfunding page set up for this, since of course uh, the flying the Koreans in is not going to be cheap. So a bit of help to in make sure that we can also increase the production value, get additional casters in, would definitely be appreciated. And the cool thing is that excess money will go to charity, and even more important. Anything that's donated will be matched by our sponsors, meaning if you put in, let's say, $20 or whatever, the sponsors will put in an extra 20 so everything is going to get doubled there. So it's actually a pretty awesome setup. Pretty awesome is also what we're seeing in the early game here, because this game has started off very much more aggressive than I expected it to. Two kills for Team Ash once again in the early game. They already pulled it off on map number one. Now, it didn't really help them in the late game, but I gotta say that I love this early game aggression. And they didn't only get the two kills, but they also stole the opponent's camp. Now, Tracer gets taken down, though. So, yeah, Tracer eliminated, Jojo, and once more, the same as on the first map, Team Bangbush is after the initial shock re recovering very quickly, and then turns it around, takes the wall down, gets two kills, and equalizes the score here. So, yep, that's what it is. Yeah, pretty big actually. Uh, two kills to two, and there's the seeds. All right. So now that we're moving in for the uh, first seed, seems like the red team is gonna have a bit of an easier time things to the position that we have here. Yeah, <laughs> Bishops is trying to get a few additional stacks, and that's the cool thing about Vala. I mean, Vala with the arrow build is not really as risky as you would go if you uh, planned on uh, just solely focusing on the auto attack style here with the Gambit Talon on level 1. As long as you have a lot of these fights happening outside of the minion waves, you can really get a lot of good stacks together out of this, and then your damage is increasing very significantly and of course you can also chip in to help with the garden terror defense you can also go for the objective here too and bishops is already working in quite some neat damage here as you can tell nano p is definitely in trouble but here comes farlander from the side nine stacks for now for vala exactly and she could get a little bit more but she likes the number a lot so that's why we're not getting another arrow at least for the time being but as it stands Level 7 talents are ready, and we get the Frost Shot. Yeah, no need for Monster Hunter in this scenario. This isn't Battlefield of Eternity, after all. But camps are being stolen all over the place. And I highlighted a little bit at the beginning, when we were in the draft, actually, how important the camps are on this map, because you gain a lot of map control with this. But now we have teams on both sides invading the opponent's territory and trying to take these camps away to give themselves an advantage on the lane. Valena just chasing as much as he can, but Rhaegar, he gets caught in the middle of the map and is getting attacked there again. So yeah, good stuff. Lauber on the way down to the bottom of the map. We have another seed about to be attacked and Team Ash really wants to go for it, aren't they? I mean, they're coming in already with a second seed attempt now that Rhaegar is dead. But the death timers are, of course, incredibly low this early in the game, so he'll be back in a jiffy. And Swamp Grotta... Uh, he's on the receiving end of a beating at the top. Uh, but it's Vala that goes down first. Team Ash. I mean, they're losing Tracer. So Tracer gets the kill on Vala, but then she herself dies. So this might still result in... Yes, it's going to result in Henning getting the seat for the team. But I like that Team Ash is now going for a very aggressive play. And it's just always in their face here. Talking about aggressive plays. We currently have 15 stacks for Vala. 
That is not bad at all. Bishops will definitely have a good time in the late game if this continues. His damage output should be fairly good. And he can also help to take some of these camps. Monster Hunter or no Monster Hunter? Doesn't really matter at this point anymore. So there's another one. Yeah, gets the first hit in. Oh, gets another one. 70 stacks, dodges out on the tongue. And Vala will, as this game continues, definitely become an issue here. Especially, of course, in the later stages, as already highlighted. We get level 10 abilities, that gives us the Ancestral. Vala, of course, also has the advantage of being uh, behind three frontliners, so there's a lot of hit points that are shielding her here. Uh, my try is barely able to get out, but he does get out, so good for him. And they get level 10 down here. Bit of a battle still as they are trying to steal the camp away. I mean, this is just the theme of the game right now. Stealing the camps whenever you can and they're going to get it. Yeah, they're stealing the camp and they nearly got a kill too. Swam Grotta makes it out. That actually is incredible. The top fort has been destroyed on the other hand. And now that we're seeing Skok again attacked by Tracer at the bot lane, it seems like uh, he's probably not going to make it. Yeah, he doesn't stand a chance here because they're attacking him from all sides now. Even if he plays a little bit more around the gate, he is going to fall. And now, of course, they're now going to try and use Sylvanas to just pressure through the bot lane and take a fort down as well. There's still a little bit of action happening in the middle of the map as we're seeing a similar picture being painted here. The blue team is invading in the hopes of taking another fort down, so they're doing their best. Yeah, that's a kill. The Haka is dead. Bot lane still in play. Okay. And this is getting this is getting a bit crazy. <laughs> I really like it. We're seven minutes in and we already have nine kills. Uh, 13,000 damage by Tracer. 26,000 by Vala. And I'm telling you, her arrow build is going to do wonders later on. That's the one thing that I would be a little bit worried about if I'm Team Ash, honestly. So, currently what we have is still a bit more pressure being applied here in the middle, but the next seed could technically be the first Garden Terror wave. Depends on who takes it. Team Asher has two seeds to their name. Sylvanas, on the other hand, gets taken down by Vala, so that means that now we're having a 5 versus 4. And if they get another kill, it seems like they will, then goodbye seed number 3. So yes, they lose Malfurion. And Vala is just getting way too many hits in. She's already at 24 stacks on her level 1. And they're taking another structure down. Bishop's doing his best here. 25 stacks for now. Gets his level 13. Probably going to be uh, going for the siphoning arrow here. We'll see in a moment. But yeah, Tracer at least got the damage down at the bottom of the map. It's Gloom, by the way. Uh, playing it safe against Tracer's bomb. But bot lane 4 has been taken down by Farlander. So there's that. Yeah, and up here, as you can tell, we have even more pressure now coming with camp after camp being stolen. Them now going also for the minion waves here, which means they're getting extra experience. Each team has two seeds, so the next one is going to go for the Garden Terrors. And yeah, this is getting pretty difficult for Team Ash. Now, to be fair... Tracer has been doing a lot of damage in this game too. She's sitting at 13,000. Doesn't sound like much, but she's got multiple kills against Vala in the back, for example. So if Tracer can pop off in these team fights and really get the important kills, then a comeback is always in the cards for them. And they're not too far behind. It's a little bit more than a level. We now have them on level 13 talents too. But obviously the stacks on Vala are going to become a bit of a concern as the game continues. So you got to be careful around that. Vala is sitting at 33,000 damage, which means she's doubling the damage of Jojo, who is, interestingly enough, the top damage dealer for Team Ash at this point. Which is kind of crazy. But yes, 16 is only a level away. And let's not forget about the Globals. That's an advantage that Team Ash has. Big fight again in the middle. Apoc just zoning them out a little bit, not doing much more than that. They're trying to control Tracer as Farlander is recalling. That didn't really work out too much. Couple more stacks are already connecting as Bishops is also looking for more hits with his arrows and they're pushing them back here. Vala waiting for the cooldown, getting the kill against the Arca with the help of Rega and they're trying for more. Here comes the ancestral bound Hogger pogging out into the wrong direction for just a second. Bishops gets the kill on Jojo though and that means the front line is gone and they can easily now go for the third seed. We have 30 stacks also for Vala, so Bishops should feel very comfortable right now. They have level 16 in a few moments as well, so advantage after advantage. Here come the Garden Terrors and the Bang Bush. They are trying to snowball this game hard. 
Yeah, they're starting with a bit of a snowball and trying to turn it into an avalanche and currently things are looking very, very good for them here. Vala by now going for the seething hatred. So even more damage being dealt now as long as Bishops is dealing with his hatred stacks. And they got a lot going for them now. Experience lead, stats advantage, talent advantage, and they have the objective too. So yeah, this is getting crazy. They are heavily taking these structures down now. If they can take a keep here, that would be the dream. And with a three level lead, the stats advantage alone should put them in a position where they can make that make a realistic attempt for it. Especially if they're somehow able to get a kill. I mean, Malfurion's doing his best to empower Tracer by overhealing her time and time again. But Falenda is really suffering here right now. And they're so far behind in talents and experience that it's tricky. But at least they're taking the Garden Terrors down, so they haven't lost a keep yet. They are still really struggling to keep everybody alive. And here comes the Hakan out on his way down to the bottom of the map. The fight is once again breaking out with another Apocalypse being used. But still, might try. He's the one in trouble. Another wall stun against him. Diablo getting saved here. And Vala with one arrow after another. Hotter pull already being used, but Dibbles is down. Skok is also low and gets killed. They went a bit too deep. But at the same time, it is Swam Grotta at the top that uses all of the commotion to get the keep. So they got two kills, but they lost their keep for it. Trade-off that Bangbush is apparently happy with. The keep is gone. A two-level advantage is still there. And Vala with 35 stacks for now is sitting at 51,000 damage. 51,000 damage. Camps are, of course, now stolen all over the place by Team Ash. They're trying to make the best out of the situation they're in. They finally got some momentum and they're trying to use it. And they're using it with another kill. Lauba turns again into Lulba and goes down. So he's dead and Bishops gets body blocked and Vala can kiss her life goodbye too. All right. All of a sudden, Team Ash is starting to push the agenda here. They're going for the bot lane. Top side, catapults are being dealt with. Horda pulled again. And bye bye, Hogger. Veni VD BG. He came, he saw, and he died. Jumped in heavily with his ult and then got just murdered. And they are just continuing that killing spree. So this is actually getting crazy. With Sylvanas in their midst, they are murdering them, guys. I mean, look at this. They are absolutely ripping them apart right now. This started with not a single fort being destroyed on the side of the Bang Bush. Actually, not quite true. One fort was down. But now, all of a sudden, they took the keep. Bang Bush took the keep top side and sacrificed two heroes for it. And they, they got shellacked. Team Ash went through them like hot butter through cheese as they killed one hero after another are now ahead in kills 10 to 9 and were able to take one structure after another by stealing all of the camps too. And now we're talking about a seed and if they get that then we're gonna get the Garden Terrors on the map. So Team Ash is murdering them, absolutely crushing it here all of a sudden. Now the fights continue and it seems like Falander is not gonna make it, he's down. But the Garden Terrors are still taken. So now you have to somehow try and stop that from happening. And there's the Blessed Shield to cover the retreat. They were thinking to go for the core. They are still thinking to go for the core with Tracer gone. I'm not sure if that's going to work out for them. So Swam Grota, that's a bit optimistic, my friend. Yeah, I have no idea what he was thinking, but like that was obviously not happening. So Hogga is defending, Swam Grotta trying to hearth back right in vision of the wall, but now they're going for the Dehaka kill! He's low! The blue team can't afford this! Blue team can't lose heroes here, Hogga has dealt with the mid lane, now they're dealing with the top, but we also still have a Garden Terror down here, this one is not gonna make it though, but what a weird game all of a sudden. Level 20 is there, and off we go. Yeah. Level 20 with the Farseer's Blessing. The Horda pulled into the Secret Stash. And we got the Acrobat. But... <laughs> Win for a game, boys. Look at this. 20 kills. 15 minutes in. Yeah. And they're still looking for the next kill here. Yes. Trying to dodge out. One arrow. Two arrows. Yep. Gets another one. Acrobat all over the place. Acrobat is getting a little bit insane with an arrow build. If this game lasts longer, can you imagine what kind of stacking Vala is going to have on this? That damage is going to be nasty. 
always assuming that the game lasts for another five minutes with a couple of brawls and so on. But yeah, so right now, 20 is all that Team Ash can think about. They need half a level until they have their own Storm Talons. And they should be able to get that. But we are in for a game. It looked in the mid game at least as if the blue team could be walking away with an easy victory. But not so much. They actually have to fight for this one. Now let's double check the damage on Vala again. She's at 62,000 damage. 41 stacks. Sylvanas with a 48k. Blaze the only one in the entire game that hasn't died yet. And they are trying to capitalize now on that level 20 for as long as they can. They know that the window is closing. So they are trying to use it to at least break the wall down. And that's what they're currently doing. The wall is down. Blessed Shield gets upgraded. Yeah, the Lunar Shower. Not to be mixed up with a Golden Shower. That's something different. And on top of that, we got the Contagion and the Get Stuffed. Triple cut up pulled at the top. Yeah, you better deal with that too. <laughs> yeah, we're only 60 minutes in, but still. No seed for either team, so it's going to take a while until we get another objective. And, well, they try to go in. Ult used by Jojo. Oh boy, oh boy. The block with the bunker. They're blocking the path of the bunker completely. And Morenas is dropping low and gets ping-ponged around. Nicely done. Blaze is setting that up. Big stun. Big kill. They go for Renella. And he turns into dead Nella. Nicely done. Well played. And now they seem to be going straight for the core. Check this fight out. So first they go for the Jojo kill. That all was done with the help of the bunker that blocked her. And then they're catching with the APOC. They're getting not only the Haka, but they're also taking Malfurion down. The core is falling, by the way. Fallen is going for the core over here, as you can see. So he did his best and is trying to play a Nexus Mosquito. But, yep, that's the end of Tracer, very likely. <laughs> you can't run, you can't hide. No matter what you're going to do, like, you're in trouble, my friend. Get burned to a crisp, baby. So, yes, Tracer dies as the core falls on the right side. They are making a play for game. 51 stacks for Vala, by the way. She's at 80,000 damage thanks to that. And that is a 2-0 victory for the Bang Bush in the first round of the tournament as they move on to the winner bracket semi-final. GG, well played. Thank you everybody for watching the video today. I hope that you enjoyed the show and the commentary. And keep in mind that the spoiler protection that is going to run for the rest of the video is made possible by all the support on Patreon.com. So guys, if you want to support my work, if you want to help me start new projects and keep the spoiler protection in place, please consider heading over to Patreon.com slash Kaldor. There's also a link in the YouTube description and check that out. Thanks in advance and see you guys next time with more esports coverage here on Kaldor TV. Have a great day.